In this video, we'll create some ground for the tree that we have already created. Before we start, I want to group this tree so that it's easily movable. I'll go to Window and choose Outliner. From Outliner, I can access all these objects. So let's select all these four objects. And you can either press Ctrl G or we can go to Edit and choose Group. We'll give a name to our group. I'll double click on that and write Tree. Great. So inside that we have all these other objects. If you want, you can also give individual names to these objects. Now let's create a plane and we'll start to modify the plane to look like some ground. I'll go to Create Menu, choose Polygon Primitives, and choose Plane. It's too small, so it's not visible. I can go to my Scale tool, make it bigger. Nice. I'll go to divisions or subdivisions, height and width. I'll give a ma manual value of 24 to give more detail. Now what I want to do is I want to bend this surface so that in the middle area it's raised up and in the rest of the area it's lowered down. I can do that by selecting vertices. Now if I select one vertex for example and I move the vertex, you can see that I'm moving just one single vertex. Now there's an easier way to select more vertices and to have a small fall off so that the vertices that are closer to the, vert to the one that I've selected will be uh, lifting up higher and the others will just lift up a little bit. To access this feature, we can either press the keyboard shortcut B or we can double click on this move tool to open the tool options and there we have something called soft selection. We have to enable the soft selection. And now we can also decide the fall off radius. That means how much we want other vertices to be affected. So the more I give, you can see that it's in including more of those vertices. So with soft selection, if I'm clicking from the center and pulling it up, you can see that instead of just pulling one single vertex, it's actually pulling all these vertices. That's nice. So this is the kind of result that we wanted to create. And I want to stretch this for a longer distance. So instead of keeping it as a square shape, I can pull from here to make it like so. I can pull from here to make it like so. OK, so as you can see, our tree has actually gone inside. So we can either bring the tree up or we can bring the plane down. So I'm going to bring the plane down a bit, something like that. Great. Now what I can do is I want to make these tree a bit smaller because I think it's too big. Now, if I want to select all the group objects, I can also select one object and press up arrow in the keyboard, which will select the entire group. I want to make the group to be smaller, something like that. And I want to make a couple of more duplicates of this ground. So I'll make a duplicate, Control D, pull it away. And this time I want to make it bigger. Maybe I'll have to push, pull it up more higher. Select one, pull it up higher. You can create different mountain kind of appearance. Okay, and I want to create one more similar to that in the other side. I'll make another duplicate, pull it this side, rotate it a bit. So here I will push it slightly down to create a different appearance. Now what I'm trying to create is I want to put a camera view so that in that camera view I can see almost all these trees and stuff. Okay, good. We can also turn off the soft selection later. 
so that we have our tree with some mountains in the background. For the background, I can just add one more object, which can be a simple plane. Let's go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and Plane. Let me make the plane bigger. Rotate it. Like so. And we'll move it back. Needs to fill up the entire space. So I'll just go back, make it bigger. Push it back behind everything. And there it is. Now just before finalizing we can also get our camera view so that that will help us to decide what all things will be visible in the camera and what all things will not be visible in the camera. So I'll go up here and click on this button that says resolution gate. So that actually gives us a resolution gate. So I can just frame the shot. We'll have to make it a bit more bigger. Okay, great. The grid is kind of disturbing, so we can also turn off the grid. That's perfect. So we have a tree on the ground, then we have some uh, other planes in the background. So this concludes the video on creating grounds and background plane for our tree.